So other than all the hoopla around this record bull run, it was really a typical summer session. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, it really struggled all session long. It really tried to give up traction, but then it finally gave up after the Federal Reserve minutes were posted. And this is interesting because there were several lines in that statement that mentioned trade, and the media took that and ran with it, ignoring, I think, more troubling aspects of that communique. Now, first, the notion that the market has been dragged down because President Trump is fighting back on unfair trade practices, I think, a little misleading. I want you to look at the biggest sell-offs in 2018. You see where three of five happened before the so-called trade war. In fact, think about this, okay? A lot of that, most of that, is all worries about the Federal Reserve excessive tightening. Interestingly enough, uh, the Dow actually bottomed out on March 23rd. That's when those steel and aluminum tariffs actually went into effect. And since then, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 2,200 points. Now, close to 3,000 points on the downside this year, nothing to do with trade, everything to do with the Fed. So the FOMC minutes, uh, they expose a certain concern that uh, maybe, maybe they may not have the right tools, right? They want to employ them during this next crisis. Now, it's, the, the, it's, it gets a little wonky, but it's called the effective lower bound, or ELB. Uh, now, here's the good news. Uh, they say they may not have to employ these measures for up to a decade. Meanwhile, the idea of chasing fundamentals, right? You don't want to chase the market. You don't have to chase fundamentals. After the close, the board of Nordstrom's voted to buy back 1.5 billion of their own stock. They affirmed a dividend of 37 cents. Again, in the past week, a Wall Street consensus for the stock has climbed to $3.77 from $3.65. Those earnings estimates, by the way, are probably going to go up. All of this underscores the fact that you're not chasing performance, you're anticipating it. I'm going to bring Dave and Melissa back with me now. Folks, you know, one of, one of my goals for the show, and they finally said, okay, we're going to give you the show. What's your main goal? I want people to have prosperity. I want people to seek American greatness. I want Americans to own great American companies and stocks. I want people to change their lives. And one of the issues now is whether or not we touched on it slightly, chasing this market. I just tell people, you're not chasing the market. Chase fundamentals, and I think you'll be okay. Yeah, I don't think it's too late to get in. And I don't think people miss the rally either. Because even if you didn't get in in 2017, we had the big move. It's not too late. There's all kinds of things now. There's a little app. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called Robinhood. People can buy stocks just on their phone. This is for the average investor. My son so, has a Robinhood account. Yeah, there we go. I never even heard of it until recently. Because someone asked me about it. You get one free share. And I'm telling you, there's so many things for the regular person to get in that they can use that are, that are user-friendly. That's a great point. Because not only is, is this Robinhood app aimed at the, uh, you know, the millennials and the generation after them. So was that move yesterday by J.P. Morgan, all right, the, the free trades. Yeah. You, got a, you get 100 true. free That's trades right. for nothing. So this, to me, anticipates maybe more individual investors will come into the market. So I want to ask you about that and also how far you think this rally could go, David. You know, if we, if we ran away from every new high in the market, you would have been out of the market for the last 100 years. You know, we can have that conversation any time we want. I think you're right. You do focus on the fundamentals right now. And right now, the data is pretty, pretty good. It's pretty solid. You know, we're not egregiously overvalued. You know, we're 16 and a half times uh, forward earnings. That's pretty, that's pretty normal. You know, it's nothing to be afraid of uh, right now. And I find any number of stocks in any number of industries right now that actually look pretty attractive. So you, you would buy almost any industry now, even be, beyond tech then? Definitely beyond tech. I, I'm, I'm very heavy. Actually, my biggest overweight right now is industrials right now. Uh, I find it very exciting. What I talked about with the rails, those car loads are speaking to the health of this uh, the consumer, the health of the economy right now. And you're seeing a lot of money going to industrials right now. Sectors like even retail. Retail was a, a sector just thrown away. You know, the Amazon roadkill. These companies finally got it. Some fell to the wayside, right, but right. now they're heavily invested in online. Uh, I think it was Target that actually spent $7 billion on online. By the way, uh, the, those rails and the transpos made a new all-time high yesterday, which many old-time uh, investors, not, not saying you're old, but <laughs> think is the ultimate confirmation <laughs> that, the, that the economy is on fire. <laughs> Are you worried about anything, Melissa? I'm not worried about anything except for the tariffs, which the market has reacted negatively to, but then it shrugs it off, and then it keeps moving higher. Uh, who's to say? We're not going to go when through the When the tariffs were the reported, year. though, a lot of people were saying we're going to be down big. I'm telling you, if you'd have gone back to March 1st True. and said, where would the Dow be four months from now, three months from now, mm -hmm. virtually every analyst on Wall Street would have said down 2,000 points, not up 2,000 points. I think we're out of the woods, which I said before. We're out of the woods with it, but it doesn't mean we're not going to have a down day. The people people need to understand not to panic if we have another down day. Quick, are you worried about uh, What's your greatest worry? My biggest worry is what I don't know that's out there right now. It's the black swan. 
the black swan that's always out there. I love it when they do black swan, uh, you know, panels and everyone's guessing. You're not supposed to know what it is, right? You, you can't know what it is. You really mentioned the biggest worry, and that's the Fed. The Fed has entered most bull markets uh, yeah. right now, and I'm kind of concerned. I think interest rates are very low around the world. I think their ability to hike is, is constrained. I think it'd be good if we only raise rates one more time this year, and that was that's Trump's point where he keeps mentioning it. So that is yet to be determined. We'll see. We'll see. You know, the Fed doesn't know. like to get pushed around by the White House. I don't we'll know see. what wonky means. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying that. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> well, President Trump awarded the first airmen since the Vietnam War the Medal of Honor. The award is given to those who risk their lives and go beyond and beyond, above and beyond the call of duty. We're talking about Sergeant John Chapman. His wife and his family, his widow and his family were there. It's very touching. Can't wait to share the story with you. Next.